You saw it live here on Sun News Network. Toronto Police Chief Bill Blair speaking for the first time about that teenager who was shot dead on a streetcar over the weekend after a standoff with police. I am very aware that the public is very concerned about this tragic event. They have every right to be concerned. I recognize that there is a need for answers and that the public quite rightfully expects that the matter will be thoroughly investigated. I want to assure you all that this will be done. The public also has a right to demand that the Toronto Police Service examine the conduct of its officers and to ensure that its training and procedures are both appropriate and followed. This will be done. Addressing the concerns of the public and the deceased young man's family is our highest priority. We will act as quickly as circumstances and the law allow. Well, former police officer Ross McLean of RossMcLeanSecurity.com joined us earlier with his take on the situation. This was a tragic shooting. Yeah. Just, just tragic. He uh, had a knife, right? He had a knife. That's what that's what's reported. Okay. And you can pretty much see on the one video that's been enhanced and put together. Yeah. It's tragic, but the public has seen this because that video was published. Right. And the public is shocked. By a bystander. The public is shocked, mm -hmm. and rightly so, and the public want to have answers. And I will say this, I'm glad that the chief came out and spoke and said something today, mm -hmm. because we really need some leadership on the police oversight and accountability. Ross, set up the situation for us. We haven't even had an opportunity because we went right to the, uh, the press conference with uh, the police chief. But over the weekend, this young man... Young man on a streetcar around midnight, I think it was, out in Dundas, out in a popular busy area of the city. There you see it there with the video. He was on there. He apparently was uh, flashing himself a little bit at the back of the streetcar, okay. then pulled out a knife and ordered everybody off of the streetcar, okay. who quickly obliged, and they yeah. all got off the streetcar, which was great. The police responded. Uh, a lot of police. A lot of police. You'll see a few at first. Yeah. But it appears from the video anyways, and the videos don't tell you everything, but we'll look at it. You can yeah. tell that there appears to be one officer who took dead aim at him and yelled at him, drop the knife, drop the knife, drop the knife, mm -hmm. which is, there's nothing wrong with that per se, okay. but when you see the person isn't responding or dropping the knife, you should have another game plan here. And, and you're a former cop. What should that game plan be? You, you got to use your mouth. You have to talk to someone. Okay. When you see that's not working, they should know that the taser was on the way when this call went in. There's one taser. The sergeant would be out there and have it. Mm -hmm. So they should know that the deal there should be contain, stall, talk to him. Okay. Do you need a coffee? What's your problem? You fight with the wife, fight with your dad, mm -hmm. lose your job. Hey, speak to me. There's Engage no need. him. Engage. Talk until that taser arrives or some other reinforcements. And you can, with your mouth, save yourself a lot of trouble here. But my problem with a lot of this is, and these are the questions that need to be answered, and I think the chief, uh, he says he's going to provide these answers. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say this. I'll believe it when I see it. Okay. We've had a lot of talk before about being transparent. And to my point of view, there has not been transparency on police discipline or these shootings and the tactics around them if the tactics weren't followed with what was training. Okay, you've got a lot of questions about this uh, particular shooting. Uh, I read your column in the Toronto Sun, or I read your quote in the Toronto Sun, where you said uh, something interesting in the story is the fact that there's a female officer present there. She didn't appear to be in any sort of danger uh, when these gunshots were fired. Well, I mean, this is the issue. You're talking about... Uh is there an imminent threat of death mm -hmm. to you or to somebody else or injury? Probably. That's when police are allowed to use lethal force for doing it. You notice is the one officer who pulls his gun and points it, another one comes and does it. Some other ones don't do it. The one woman police officer standing behind him, beside him, she doesn't seem concerned at all. She's standing right mm -hmm. there and she's the same distance away mm -hmm. from the man with the knife. So the question is going to be, some of the questions are going to be, was there imminent danger here? And let me just preface this a little bit further. We're, we're talking about the SIU, the Special Investigations Unit, yes. is coming in to investigate it. Mm -hmm. Their mandate is limited. All they're looking at really is was this criminal mm -hmm. or not? So the officer, for the most part, could have broken every bit of training in the book leading mm -hmm. up to this. I'm not saying he did. Yeah. I'm saying he could have. Right. But because he was confronted with someone with a knife and he feared for his life, he's justified in doing the shooting. Let's, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up, and I won't use the words that the, uh, the victim used, but uh, he was apparently taunting the police officers with some rather unsavory language. Yeah, this, this young man, and look at, uh, 
19 year old uh, young men with their testosterone and doing stuff and yeah. being idiots that's yeah. nothing new to anybody it doesn't that's not a death sentence mm -hmm. what happened though and you're very right about this he was calling him names because he saw when he's he calling the, the cop names when yeah. he saw he had the gun pulled on yeah. him I'm assuming I'm, I'm gonna make a guess here he was calling him that name for pulling a gun on him when mm -hmm. he's just got a knife and he's just a kid mm -hmm. but what happened after that the audio has been cleaned up on this a fair bit mm -hmm. and it looks like now one of the things that the police officer said to him aside from drop the knife was he said to him, if you take one step further in this direction, you're done. Wow. And about 10 seconds later, the young man was looking at him. He took a step forward. And he was That's done. when the first three shots came out. Wow. So that's, to, to my mind, that's escalating a situation. That's not trying to, to, to ratchet it down. That's, okay. That starts to get dangerous. Okay. All right. I'm glad you made that point because that could be a critical one as they get down to this case. Uh, fingers crossed that they do get to the bottom of this. Ross, as always, expert analysis. Really appreciate it. I want, I want to be clear. No judgments on this, but right. we're certainly entitled to start looking at appearances and asking hard questions.